do for the system. I do a bit book in the Jews. I kill you. Okay, number two. Dan, a knowledgeable fellow in UCC matters, set up new business relationships after relocating in his old hometown, Muskegon, Michigan, having been gone for many years. One thing he needed was a bank account, and he decided on the credit union where his mother and stepfather banked. After proving that the family members were already banking there, the new accounts clerk carefully handed over an application. Since the new non-interest bearing account would be in the straw man's trade name, that's how Dan filled out the app. Printing the straw man's all caps name and placing a copyright symbol immediately after the last letter of the name. When the straw man finished... When the straw man finished filling out the form, the secure party, i.e. flesh and blood Dan, wrote across the signature card in red ink, He sent me for value, it's sent from Levy. From Levy. Now, I've been studying accepted for value for two and a half years, I still can't figure out what it means. Uh, anyway, filed in his EID. Hang on, since the new non interest bearing account would be in the straw man's name, that's how Dan filled out the app. Print the straw man's all caps name and place the copyright after his name. When the straw man finished filling out the form, a secure party, i.e., flesh and blood, Dan wrote across the signature card in reading, accepted for value at Semper Levy, filed in his EID number, dated it September 23rd, 2001, and signed it. He then supplied a copy of his UCC financing statement and security agreement and turned them in with the signature card, requesting a photocopy of the card front and back. I don't, I don't see what process he's doing. The next morning, Dan received a call from the president of the bank. I'm sorry, but we will not be able to open the account. Our legal department says we can't have a copyrighted name on an account. Shortly thereafter, Dan shows up at the bank. Here is a portion of his conversation with the president. The president said, if you will simply remove the copyright symbol from the name, there will be no problem in opening the account. Dan. Will it be a secured account? Now, what does he mean by secured account? I don't know. President, yes. Dan, what happens if someone takes money out of this account? President, that will not happen. Dan, let's just say hypothetically. President, I will not let that happen. Dan, even if the IRS to wait, wants to take some money? President, even the IRS, the account will be permanently flagged private in the computer and never would be touched by anyone other than you without your permission. Since the account will be in your name, even your wife could not remove money without your official authorization. So even the IRS can't touch it? So you can have a private bank account? I didn't know that. Dan, let's just say someone did take some money out of my account. Who would be liable? President, the credit union. Dan, open the account. He receives checking services with no monthly fees and pays nothing for money orders and other such services. No fees of any kind are deducted from his account. The president also confined that the legal department had come commented that he was the strongest security agreement they ever seen this was the now what what's he on about security and then supplied a copy of his ucc finance statement and security agreement why why would you supply a copy of that to the bank i don't get it i don't see what he's done there eid employer identification number of the secure party derived from the strawman social security account number e.g. the EIN is 1234-5689 derived from the social security account number is 123-45-6789 a number uniquely identifying you know, why but why would the secure party have an employer identification number and why would it have one dash I mean where do people get this from that's what I don't get People say, oh yeah, without the dashes, that's the EIN. A, you know, if you're the secure party in the private, why on earth would you have an EIN number? I have no idea why. Why is it without dashes? I've got no idea what that is. I don't know how people come to these conclusions. I don't know where... <laughs> it's one of the mysteries, that is, isn't it? Why we put without dashes for the... Ugh. Dan decided he wanted his funds in a 401k for helping with the cost of getting set up and relocated to Muscat Muscagon. Muskegon. When he visited the brokerage house that managed the account, he was told that there would be a 30% levy for liquidating the account. A chunk of more than 4,000 in total. He left and returned with a Secretary of State certified copy of his UCC financing statement. A security agreement pointing out that he, the secure party, had the supreme claim on that account, was exempt from levy, and would return in three days for a check in the full amount of the balance. Two days later, he received a phone call and was told his wishes could not be honoured. With tape recording in hand, he went 
to the bank and asked through the account specialist and served it with a notice of declaration notice by declaration security agreement. Dan said, you are now on notice and I want my money now. If you remove any funds from the balance due, due me, you are liable for 500 grand and the same goes for the IRS. The account specialist said, I would be happy to transfer 100% of the money this second if you would just open an IRA at another bank. Dan visited another bank where he had already had an account and was known, National City Bank, and opened an IRA account in the straw man's name as usual, then accepted for value the signature card, noting exempt from levy and placing the EIN number and dating and signing as before, all in red ink. The brokerage room was provided with the bank coordinates for the I new IRA with National City Bank and the funds were immediately wired in. Less than one hour later, Dan walked out the door with a cashier's cheque for the full $13,800. But why? I don't know why that... Why has that worked? If you put your money in a 401k and, and they want 30% for bringing it out and you tell them you're the secure party, why do you get to take it to get 100% of it it's their money after all isn't it it's registered with them it's in their account it's in the 401k what I don't see why we can have a lien on it it's like having a lien on something that somebody else has got a lien on I don't really get it no financial institution could levy any of Dan's money without first placing his straw man's name on at least one piece of paper A straw man's trade name in any form is Dan's private copyrighted property. Without Dan's permission, no one may use the name without incurring a 500 grand obligation for each such use, hence all the core operation from the banks. I don't get it. I have yet to see in my own life where anybody takes you seriously or takes any notice of anything. I've yet to see it in my own life. And yet I hear these stories where the guy put them on notice that it was going to cost them 500 grand if they used the trade name and they immediately sent him all the money i i've never experienced any type of anybody taking any notice of a notice i mean what what's going on in different in my life i don't know it's like he put them on notice that it's going to cost them this much and they complied with his wishes right away it's like it's unheard of i don't get it i've never on November 17, 2000, the balance on Dan's MBNA credit card was 12 grand and a half. Having recently learned of the fraudulent business practices of credit and companies, credit card companies, Dan was not uh, amenable with paying MBNA his hard-earned cash. He sent MBNA a violation of debt package, sorry, validation of debt package, requesting that they prove that he owed the money they were asking for and included a certified, a certified promising note written in strict accordance with UCC mandates for a negotiable instrument. As bonus, now, hang on, certified. I can understand what a promissory note is. I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of $100. That's a promissory note, right? Certified? What does that mean? I thought that means the bank... The drawee bank has already accepted it. As bona fide payment if the debt could... Be validated. What? Well, why not just pay the account off with the promissory note? Why ask for validation of the debt? I mean, who gives a shit? You know, if it's a credit card for 12 grand, just fucking send them a promise over 12 grand. Why do you need to validate the debt? Who fucking cares? I don't get it. What's the point of that? Anyway, footnotes. Now designated notice by written com written communication slash security agreement. A turbocharged and lengthier version of the copyright notice that is enclosed herein with initial details on the workings of self self-executing security agreement in the event the recipient uses the name of that authorization fee for usage is 500 grand per occurrence of use secured by all tangible and intangible property of the recipient this document drawn strictly from the ucc and, and revised article 9 is as final as a, as final as a guillotine available through bc and c of america with purchase of ucc financing statement package an exacting package of interrelated documents requiring that a credit card company offer a Swear at an affidavit, true, correct, complete, in accordance with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Identifying the substance value consideration was exchanged with the credit card account holder that supports the contract and justifies the credit card company's demand that the account holder pay the amount demanded. No financial institution in America can do this because nothing of value is ever given by any lender, including all credit card companies. The validation of debt package has never failed in stopping a credit card company seeking payment. The validation of debt package is available through B, B and C. Three days after sending in the validation of debt package, Dan sent along a notice by declaration slash security agreement informing MBNA that his name was copyrighted property and that they used it for any financial gain. It would cost him 500 grand for each use. 
That was a year ago, and Dan has neither heard from MBNA nor from any debt collectors associated with them. The 12 grand debt disappeared. On his credit report, various credit reports and agencies with uh, often been served with the notice of declaration of security agreement. The account is marked private. What do you mean? What account is marked private? What do you mean private? What does it mean? What's private? I don't get it. There is no further credit history on any credit, credit report after the date each agency was served with a notice by declaration. When Dan went credit wants credit extended from some merchant, he simply provides bank records for the last three years and sometimes letter f from the other creditors attesting his payment history. It has never been a problem. Okay, very cool. I'm going to come back in the next video.